Welcome back aliens, let's continue the series on Spring Framework. Target for this video is 150 comments. So till this point, we were able to work with Spring Boot, but then we want to also explore how do you work with Spring Framework without Spring Boot. And then uh, to achieve that, what we have done is we got this dev, we got this app, uh, basically, we were trying to create the object for dev. So when I say we are trying to create the object, basically I'm asking Spring Framework to give me the object. As you can see, uh, we have done that uh, in the configuration. So if I show you the configuration, which is spring.xml, we got three objects here. So every time you want the object from Spring Framework, if you are not using Spring Boot, we have to use some configuration. We are using XML here. You can also do that in different ways. But in XML, if you are doing that, we can use bean tags. Uh, you can see we got a bean tag with the ID dev and the class name is dev. Uh, we got another bean tag, which is dev1, and the class is dev. Then we got laptop of class laptop. So in total, when you run this application, your Spring Framework will see this and say, okay, it's my job to create these three objects and it will do that for you. And in the container, basically in the IOC container, or you can call it a Spring container, you will find these objects. You can see we got uh, three objects here, two for dev and one for laptop. Why this happening is because we have done that in the bean configuration, you can see here, three different beans. And the IDs, for the particular first object, the ID is dev. For the second object is dev1. And for the third object, laptop, it is your laptop, right? So these are the IDs for it. Now, what we want to do is, let's say in the dev class, I have some properties. So in this particular video, let's discuss how do you work with the injections, the setter injection and the constructor injection. To do that, uh, of course, what I want ultimately is to have the laptop object here. Okay, maybe I, I, I mean, I just want to introduce a reference. I want Spring to give this object because at this point is just a reference, it's not the object. So let's say in the build, if you try to say laptop.compile, which is a method of laptop class, it will not work. Reason is laptop, this one is just a reference. We have not assigned an object here or we have not instantiated here, or we have not specified the memory here. So by default it will be null, and when you run this, it will give you our favorite error, which is null point exception, and we don't want it, right? So ultimately we want this object to be passed, but at this point, I will just comment it. We'll use it later because this will, this will not work. And to understand how do you inject, let's start simple. What I will do is, uh, let me create a simple variable here, and uh, maybe the variable name or variable, uh, name is age. Of course, you can go with any name, doesn't matter. But let's say I'm saying age here. And in this build, I want to print the age. So whenever someone calls the build, uh, I want to print the age. Or if you don't want to do that from here, we can do one more thing. See, uh, app is a main class, right? This is where you have your main method. And if you say you got this object here, let me just uncomment this. You got this object here of dev class, and you're calling build. Let me say I don't want to call build now. What I just want to do is, I want to print the value for age. So what I will do is I will simply say s out and obj.age. Now, since it's an int variable, let me show you that. Uh, let me just minimize this thing. We don't need that. Uh, let me just put that here on the side. Yeah, okay. So if you see age is an int variable, and if you, when you try to access this, it will try to pick up the default value. So what do you think the default value for age is? Of course, it's an int value, so default value will be zero. And when you run this, you will get zero. Let me just try this. So I'll run this app, and now you can see it prints zero. Yeah, we got this output as well is because we were working with the constructor. Ignore that, we got this zero here, right? Now I want to assign some values to it. And we can do that, right? So we can simply say int age is equal to some value, eight or 10, because nowadays children at the age of seven, eight, they are doing programming. Uh, it's fun and weird at the same point. But anyway, the point is we have assigned a value to it. And if you have noticed, I'm not using private modifier here. That's on purpose, it's because I want to use this variable directly here. Not a good practice, but since we are into learning stage, we want to see what are things happening behind the scene. So I'm doing that here, okay? And uh, so we can pass it. Now what I will do is, I don't want to, uh, I mean, of course, we should run this first just to see if this is working. And you can see we got eight. So you can assign the value from here. Or you can assign the value from here as well. You can say obj.age and you can set whatever value you want to what, want here. Let's say 18. And uh, if I run this, uh, it should be 18 is because initially you have assigned 8 when the object was creating. 
Uh, but then later on, when you are running this, after the object creation, you are replacing the value with 18. And that's why it is 18 here. Now, let me just make this variable as a private variable because that's the uh, ideal way. And I don't want to assign the value from here. Not a good idea to assign hard-coded hard values. Now, since this is a variable which is private, uh, if you want to access this from outside, ex example, if you here, if you try to see that, it says uh, age has a private access. So we can't directly access it. We need a getter and setter for that. So what I will do is, uh, I will just create a getter setter after this constructor here. So right click and say, hey, I want a getter setters for this, for this very particular variable and I got it. So you can see we got the getter, we got the setter, okay? And if you want to assign the value, this is not a good way. You can simply say set age. You can set the age as 18 and whatever value you want to assign. And here you can say obj.getAge, right? And now if you run this, uh, what you're expecting is, of course, we want 18, and that's what we got here. But what if you don't assign the value? Let's say we are not assigning a value here. And if I run this, uh, you can see we got zero. Cool. But now the point is, I want to assign this value using Spring Framework. So I don't want to do that here or here. I want to assign some value with the help of Spring. So I want to inject the value. How do I do that? Now, since we are saying we want to, we want Spring to do it, we have to do the configuration in this Spring.xml file. And how do we do that? See, when you are creating this object here, what you can do is, in this particular bean tag, there are multiple options. You can assign properties because ultimately these are called properties, right, for, for the object. So you can define a property. Now, this is a inbuilt tag inside this Spring. So you can say, a property and then in this property you can assign a name of a property so which property you want to change i want to change the value for the age property with what so you have to assign the value as well so let's say the value is uh, maybe different value 12 i think this is the ideal age uh, to start programming not 8 so anyway so uh, we got age as 12 and now let's run this and let's see what happens if you run this you can see we got 12 that means we are assigning Okay, when I say V, uh, Spring is assigning the value of uh, 12 to age variable, right? So that's what that's what is happening here. So when I say when I'm, I'm creating, the, I'm getting this object, the object which got created inside your container, now it has a age variable and the value is 12. So the moment you create this instance, it will have the value 12 because of this setting here. But what about the dev one? Is it applied there as well? Let's try. So what I will do is I will just go back here and say dev1 and if you run this, uh, you can see it is not for dev1. So when I say dev1, which is uh, this particular thing here, the value for age is still zero because we have not assigned the value for that. And how do we know that? So if you see the bin, we are not assigning a property here. Okay. And since we are not using it, we can also remove it. Right. So we can just go back here and say go back to dev because we don't have dev1 at this point and run this, it will go back to 12. So this is how basically you use setter injection. But we have one more, which is constructor injection. How do we do that? So what I will do is, I will create one more constructor here, uh, which is a parameterized constructor. So I'll just right click here and say, hey, generate a constructor for me, which will take int uh, age as a parameter. And you got it here. And I want to inject the value of age, not with the setter, but with the constructor. So that means I will just go back here in the spring.xml file. And here, instead of using a property, because property will use setter, I can just come in that section and we can use something called a constructor argument. And in this, you can specify the value as whatever value you want, let's say 14 in this case. And instead of, I will just say self-closing tags, yeah. So instead of using a property, I'm going to use a constructor. This time it will use this particular constructor. And you can see when you say dev constructor, it was getting printed here, right? Because initially we were using a default constructor. Now, since we are using a parameterized constructor, I will just say dev one constructor, just to differentiate between the parameterized and the default one. Okay, and now let me run this. Now what will happen is with the, with the help of this constructor argument uh, tag, we can assign the value with the help of constructor. And you can see it says dev one, right, which is the parameterized constructor output, and the value is 14. Cool. So that's how basically you can use constructor and setter. Okay, but there are certain things which you have to remember. In the property, we have used name. In constructor, we are not doing that. It's because we have a constructor which takes only one parameter. But if you want, you can also specify name here. There's a name property here if you can use that. You can say age. 
But since we only have one parameter, you can skip that. If you have two parameters, and if you want to specify the sequence, you can also use index. Uh, you can specify for index zero, index one. So at this point, we just have one. But let's say in case if you have two, two uh, parameter here, let's say age and salary, in that case, uh, you can specify the index zero for age and index one for salary. So you just have to say construct the arguments two times. Cool. So that's how basically you use a setter injection and the constructor injection. But then that was for this simple variable, right? What about a variable like laptop? Now, this is not a simple variable. This is a reference variable, right? Which is you have a class reference there. And how do we achieve that? So what I will do is I will just uh, comment this constructor. So we don't want to work with age anymore. So I can just comment that section. Let's only focus on the laptop. Now, when I say focus, what I want to do is in the dev, when you say build, right? Example, in the app, when you're calling this build, build will call the method called compile. And with those settings, okay, let me, let me also comment at this age. I don't want to print age. Uh, let me run this. There's no age now. It's just a constructor. And you can see we got an error. It says the laptop, uh, they cannot invoke is because we got null pointer exception. It says this laptop is null. Okay. Null is because we have not created the object. We just got the reference of it, which is here. So what I want to do is, we know that in the container, we do have the object of laptop. We have it here. We just have to inject this to the developer object, right? The instance. And how do we do that? Of course, we can use a spring here. So don't you think laptop is also a property? What I can do is uh, for this particular dev, I can simply specify a property, but this time not for the age, but for the laptop right and then we can assign a value to it okay hold on now that's a problem for the age we can assign the value because that's a int variable that's a primitive variable laptop is not a primitive variable it's a reference variable you can't simply assign a value to it so what to do so instead of assigning a value we can use something so if i say control space you can see we get two options not one we get a ref and we get value so we can use ref for the reference but the question is, what should we specify in the reference? Now, that's a question. If you go down, we do have this laptop object here, right? And the ID for that is laptop. So the same ID, so instead of using laptop, let me just try one more thing. I will say lab one. So this is the ID we need to use here. I mean, we can also use laptop. I just don't want you to get confused between laptop, laptop. Is it a class laptop or the instance laptop or the name laptop? So I've just changed the name of a bean, which is a uh, Initially, it was laptop. I say lap, lap one. And that lap one I'm using here. So what we are trying to do is we are saying, hey, I'm creating this object. OK, so when I say I, Spring, uh, when I say, hey, Spring, create the object, Spring says, OK, let me try to create the object for dev. But the moment it, it is trying to create the object, it will create the object for sure. But it will see at the property and say, hey, you know, the, we need to get the laptop uh, reference here. And where do we find it? So the name of the reference is lap one. So it will search the container by saying, hey, do we have any object of the laptop or any object with the name lap one? And it will find that it, was, it is there, right? And it will try to connect it. So basically what we're doing is we are doing a wiring here. So we are wiring the laptop object into the dev object. So that, that wiring is what is helping to do that. But will it really work? Let's try. So what I will do is I will just run this and we got the error. I was not expecting the error, but we got the error. Let's try to solve it now. So the error, if I go up, and it, it's good to get errors, you get something new every time. Uh, it says bean property laptop is not writable or invalid. Oh, okay, okay. See, when we specify the property for the age, we have used getter setters for it. For the laptop, we have not specified the getter setters yet. My bad. So what I will do is uh, we need to get the getters and setters. In fact, we need setters, not getter, but we'll have both. They come in the parcel. Uh, so I'll say generate and uh, get us it for laptop. And now we have it. Okay. I don't think it should complain now. Uh, let's relaunch it. Oh, it's working. You can see it says compiling. So that was the issue. We have not specified the get us it is. And what we have done is we have specified a property for laptop. And we are saying that the reference is lab one. Cool, right? So this is how basically you reference it. Now, this is a setter injection for the reference variable. What about the constructor? Let's try. So what I will do is uh, let's go back to the same constructor which we are using earlier, but this, instead of saying int age, let me say laptop, laptop, and here this dot laptop should be equal to laptop. 
okay? So instead of age, I'm going for the, uh, the laptop now. And in here, we can specify, a con in fact, I will do that here. I will say construct arguments. And then instead of using a value, which we have used for int, or uh, for the integer variable, let's use ref and say the same thing, which is lab one, and our job is done. So this is the constructor injection. Let me try this and it works. You can see it says dev1, uh, which is the constructor for the parameterized constructor and we got compiling. So this is working. This is the constructor injection. Now, which is better? It depends. If the variable is something which is compulsory when you get the object, it's better to go with uh, constructor. But if the variable is optional, you can go with setter because uh, if you say you want to use a constructor, that means you need to have it when you are getting the object for dev. Setter, you can set it later because we can call the setter method later, not the constructor. So yeah, that's how basically you work with setter and the constructor injection with the help of primitive values and the reference values. So I, I hope uh, it was fun. We'll see you in the next video.